Rashid will hopefully go in through Medina. Um, there are a couple of other programs in Bolton today, so I'm just going to pop over to those, inshallah, because they've asked us. Um, so, from me, I would only like to say Jazakumullah for giving us the opportunity to um, impart our little bit of understanding and a little bit of knowledge that we've acquired over the years to share with you. Our intention was only to provide you with um, what we've learned over the years, and inshallah, hope that um, with that, Allah SWT will accept our khidmat and inshallah make it easy for you. And in that, hopefully, you'll make one small dua that will be a means of our acceptance as well, inshallah. So, um, as I always say, just um, keep going, keep preparing. Um, don't stop reading material. And every single day, you'll learn things. Even now, every single time we go, every single time we sit in a program, we pick up something new, which is always valuable. So. You're never learning when it comes to Hajj and sharing with others well, inshallah. Make the most of it. And when it comes to Medina, there is no other person more passionate about Medina that I know is Maulana Rashid. It's a very, very, um, it plays a very strong part and a very big place in his heart because one, he lived there, he studied there and uh, he knows the place very well. So inshallah, he'll impart his knowledge and understanding of Medina onto you, inshallah. And other than that, keep preparing and uh, do remember his new duas, inshallah. I'm going to pass the mic over to Kari Idris now, he's got a few words before he passes over to uh, Mulan Rashid, inshallah. Jazakallah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihi al-kareem. Amma Bad Aud Billahi Mina Shaitan Yur Rajim Ismillahi Rahman Yur Rahim Wadkurullah Fiya Yami Maduda Sadakallahu Lazim Mashallah Ye Past Din Bhos Sunabne or Time Dini Walone Time Vidya Latala Tamamka Time Dina Kubul for my Honata Yicha Yek is Sabki exam Lijay. कि कितना याद किया लेकिन मुझे उम्मीद है कि इंशाल्लाह पुख्ता याद आ गया होगा इंशाल्लाह हमें मदीना मुनवरा के बारे में सिर्फ दो मिनट बात करना है तो माशाल्लाह हज के पांच दिन तो खत्म हो गए अब मदीना मुनवरा के मुतालिक हजरत मौलाना ने यसरदे बताया हम किस जगह जा रहे हैं पहला दिल में तसव्वुर करें कि कौन सी हस्ती के पास जा रहे हैं कि जिस हस्ती के बारे में अल्लाह सुभान व तआला ये फरमा रहे हैं कि ला तुकद्दिमु बैन यदी अल्लाह कि अल्लाह के रसूल सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम से आगे भी नहीं और ये जगह ये फरमा या अय्युहल लजीना आमनु ला तरफौ अस्वातकुम फौक सौतिन नबी कि अपनी आवाज को रसूलुल्लाह सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम की आवाज से ऊंची ना करो और ये जगह ये फरमा इनल लजीना यगुद्दुन अस्वातहुम इंद रसूलिल्लाह कि जब रसूलुल्लाह ससम के पास खड़े हो तब अपनी निगाहों को नीचे रखो आवाजों को पस्त रखो इससे पता चलता है कि जिसकी गाइड गाइडेंस अल्लाह में बता रहा है कि आप जिस शख्सियत के पास जा रहे हो उनके आदाब ये है ये कोई दूसरा नहीं अल्लाह बता रहा है जब सहाबा के सामने ये आयत नाज़िल हुई कि अला तरफौ वस्वा रकुम फौक सौतिन नबी अपने आवाज को नबी की आवाज से ज्यादा जोर से ना करो एक सहाबी की कुदरती आवाज जोर से थी तो सहाबी ने मस्जिद नबी में आना छोड़ दिया अल्लाह के रसूल ने देखा कि एक सहाबी नहीं आ रहा है फरमाया क्यों क्या क्यों तो फरमाया कि अल्लाह के रसूल जब से आयत नाजिल हुई कि अपने आवाज को रसूलुल्लाह ससम की आवाज से ऊपर न करो मुझे डर लगता है कि मेरी आवाज कहीं ऊंची नज हो जाए तो ये 
یہ مقام ہے میرے نبی کا میرے بھائیوں اور حدیث پاک میں رسول اللہ صلی نے ارشاد فرمایا کہ جس نے میری قبر کی زیارت کی اس کے اوپر شفات واجب ہو گئے اور وہاں جا کر انسان جتنا ادب احترام کے ساتھ رسول اللہ سسم کی قبر اطہر روز اقدس کے اوپر حاضری دے گا اللہ ان کو بار بار بلائے گا جتنی ناقدری کریں گے وہاں ویڈیو کریں گے وہاں آواز کریں گے شور مچائیں گے یہ یوں سمجھو کہ آئندہ اللہ نہیں بلائے گا یہ یہاں کا تعلق پیسوں سے نہیں ہے میرے بھائیو وہاں مدینہ کا مکہ کا تعلق پیسوں سے نہیں ہے یہ دل سے تعلق ہوتا ہے انسان جتنا درود پڑے گا جتنی محبت کرے گا اللہ ان کو بار بار بلائے گا ایک چھوٹا سا بچہ تھا بیک مانگ رہا تھا مدینہ منورہ میں ٹھیک اللہ والے کے پاس گیا کہ کچھ بھی نہیں ہے کہ ایک روٹی کھلا دو میں کہا بیٹا سر میرے ساتھ پاکستان میں تجھے میں وہاں روزانہ کھانا کھلاؤں گا تو بچے رونے لگا اور کہنے لگا کہ پاکستان میں آ سکتا ہوں لیکن پاکستان میں یہ مسجد نبی ملے گی یہ یہ گنبس ملے گا وہاں پہ یہ مدینہ یہ رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی روز اقدس ملے گا کہا کہ نہیں ملے گا کہ یہاں میں بھوکا مرنا پسند کرتا ہوں لیکن میں وہاں نہیں آ سکتا یہ محبت کی بات ہوتی ہے تو آپ جس مقصد کے لیے ماشاء اللہ حج کرنے کے بعد جائیں گے اس نیت سے جائے کہ رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے روز اقدس کے اوپر اللہ ہماری حاضری کو قبول فرما اور ہمیں بار بار نصیب فرما اور وہاں جا کر وہاں کے اگر کوئی چیز آپ کو اچھی نہ بھی لگے پھر بھی زبان کو بند رکھو جتنا ہم زبان کو خاموش رکھیں گے ہمارے اکابرین چپل بھی نہیں پہنتے تھے مدینہ منورہ میں ڈرتے تھے کہ کہیں میرے نبی کا پیر لگا ہو اور میں جھوٹے پہن کر چلو اتنا نب احترام کرتے تھے اس لیے اللہ تعالیٰ آپ کا جانا قبول فرمائے اللہ آپ کو بار بار نصیب فرمائے ہم سب کو نصیب فرمائے حضرت مولانا کو بھی اللہ ان کی خدمتوں کو قبول فرمائے آپ لوگوں نے بھی جو ٹائم دیا اللہ کسی کے محنت کو ضائع نہیں کرتا ان شاء اللہ میرے اللہ کی جات سے امید اور دعا بھی ہے کہ اللہ تمام کو حجب مقبول نصیب فرمائے گا ان شاء اللہ اللہ ہمیں کہنے سننے سے زیادہ عمل کی توفیق کتا فرمائے If you have any questions regarding what we have covered so far, then do feel comfortable and do not hesitate and ask at any time, insha'Allah. We're also going to do Ziyarat of Makkah. So, the Ziyarat of Makkah is mostly on, on, on the presentation. And as you put it up, then we just go through it. Masjid al-Jinn, where there used to be Chapra Bazaar, which doesn't exist anymore. Uh, That's where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to invite the jinns towards Islam. Masjid al-Namira uh, in Arafat. Uh, sometimes it's difficult to, under, uh, to remember with, which is Masjid al-Khayf and which is Masjid al-Namira. So easier way to remember is Namira has a Ra and Ta at the end, similar to Arafat has Ra and Ta at the end. So Namira is in Arafat. And then Masjid al-Khayf. It's a bit khayf and khawf means fear and shaitan is not far away who we've got to fear from his mischief. Uh, that might help to remember Masjid al-Khayf. Yeah? Uh, it's in Mina near the Jamarat. Uh, so Masjid al-Namira in Arafat where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam delivered the sermon and the khutbah in his farewell hajj. Masjid al-Khayf, like I mentioned, in Mina, and Masjid Aisha. Masjid Aisha is on the outskirts of Mecca. And if you want to perform Umrah whilst you're in Mecca, you want to put on an ihram, then you go to Masjid Aisha. Radiallahu ta'ala anha. They have all the facilities there for ihram, for ghusl, etc. Have a carry Hira. We all know the details of Gari Hira. The first pieces of revelation came down in Gari Hira. With Hajj ahead of you, we wouldn't recommend that you go climb and go into Gari Hira. If you do, if somebody wants to, like I said, you have to take into consideration to reserve your energy for Hajj. If somebody does want to do, then one piece of advice is that do not go during the daytime you will get exhausted and 
uh, affected by the heat and the sun. If if somebody just wants and wants to go, then you should go immediately after Fajr, immediately after Fajr. So that you can get back down, go up and get back down before the sun strikes. Gauri Thawr, where the Prophet ﷺ at the time of Hijrah, the Prophet ﷺ took refuge and then the spider which spun a web in order to protect the Prophet ﷺ. Yeah. So all these uh, uh, caves and mountains, inshallah, you will see from a distance when you go for ziyarah, inshallah. Mount Abu Qubais. So now this is an old photo, so that there's an extension on the other side as well uh, towards Bab al Umrah. But and now Mount Abu Qubais has the king's palaces on it. That is the mountain mountain between Safa Marwa uh, and Hajj Aswad. So when it came down from the heavens, this is where it came down to. Jabal al Rahma, we've mentioned Jabal al Rahma when we mentioned Ar uh, Arafat. And this is the birthplace of the Prophet. There's a library there. From my memory, the last time I went, it still was there. Uh, and I think the reason why the entire area has been flattened uh, and uh, demolished and they've left the library is for that significance because it's the birthplace of the Prophet. So the Safa Marwa, that area, the Prophet was born. They say that his house was where the library is. That's where he was born at home. And this is the area where he spent his uh, youth. The first da'wah when he went to the mountain and called the people of Makkah towards Islam. Which mountain was that? Safa. That's the area where he used to live, Safa Marwa. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As a Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha, she's Makkan and she passed away in Makkah, she's buried in Jannatul Mu'alla. If there's a janaza, you can follow a janaza after Salat and make it to Jannatul Mu'alla. And then there's the Kiswa factory uh, where they make the covering of the Kaaba. I think that's access accessible as well. And then we come to Medina Munawwara. Some of, yeah, some of you may go directly to Medina Al Munawwara, and some of you may go to Makkah, and then Medina, and then come for Hajj. And some may perform Hajj and then go to Medina later on. Whichever one is your itinerary, and whatever you choose and select. Uh, Medina is important, it's a uh, wajib, you have to go to Medina. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, Man hajja wa lam yazuruni faqad jafani. Whoever performs hajj and he does not come and visit me, then he has uh, been unfair towards me. No doubt Medina is the second holiest city in Islam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he migrated when we were there, we remember that the people of Medina, Adam, Ada, and Sar, who offered the hospitality, it, if it wasn't, uh, wasn't for them, then establish, Islam would have not been established and strengthened, and Islam would have not been grounded, and then flourished from there. And we may not have been born Muslims. It was this great sacrifice by the Ansar of hosting the Muhajireen and sharing everything with them in order to establish Islam and allow Islam to flourish and spread from there to the entire globe and world. There are many, many virtues that are written here. Uh, in your own time, inshallah, you can read uh, the Prophet and encourage that one should not travel other than these three masjids, masjid Haram, masjid Nabawi, and masjid Aqsa. These are the three holy sites. Once you go to Makkah, Medina, you should also make the intention that in life, inshallah, you want to go to the furthest mosque, which is Al-Aqsa as well, inshallah. 
So that hadith is also written here. Performing one salat in Masjid Nabawi is equivalent to a thousand prayers anywhere else. A salat fi Masjid hadha ka alfi salat fi ma sabahu min al masajid. Every salat will be equivalent to a thousand salats. So it's an opportunity for you to maximize, insha'Allah. And the Prophet has also said, narrated by Imam Ahmed, that whoever prays 40 consecutive continuous prayers with jama'at and congregation at this mosque of mine without missing even one, salvation from the fire of hell and from the punishment will be destined for him along with freedom from hypocrisy. If you want to be guaranteed to be free from hypocrisy and from the fire of hell, you pray 40 salat consecutively, continuously, one after the other in Masjid al-Nabawi. And for this reason, normally the packages are uh, tailored to accommodate eight day stay in Medina Munawwara. Yet, yeah, and these salawat, 40 salat, should be read with takbir, tahriman, takbir ula, with the imam. So that's one of the main things that you want to do in Masjid Nabawi, is try to offer 40 salat with takbir, tahrima, with takbir ula, with the imam in jama'at. If synthesis does also make the intention, and then for some reason, uh, periods etc they cannot attend you will inshallah still get the reward inshallah so everybody should make the effort if you cannot go for eight days and you go for less it's still permissible it is still jais it's preferable to go for eight for eight days and try and achieve this virtue but it's not necessary but you do have to go and give your salam to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Some of these photos of Al Masjid al Nabawi, unfortunately, you will be going there, inshaAllah. This is the first surf. This is the first surf that leads you towards the chambers of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and it leads you towards the grave of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When you reach on your way to Medina throughout the entire journey, you know, try and read about Medina, the seerah of the Prophet and try and uh, develop love for the place and the personality and read as much possible Duru Sharif, Salat, Salam upon the Prophet throughout the entire journey. Once you reach Medina, you want to settle down in your hotel and, and if it's time for Salat, you go for Salat and you can come back. Similar to Umrah and Tawaf, you don't have to go immediately. You can settle in your hotel and then go later on. If when you reach and if it's time for Salat, you can go for Salat. Go pray your Salat and then come back. And normally when we enter into the masjid, we say Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Bismillah dakhultu alayhi tawakaltu on the way to sunnat al-atikaf. So once you settle, you're at ease and you're not so tired, then you should go for your salatu salam so that you can enjoy it, inshallah, you can feel it, you can sense it, inshallah, and you can totally connect. An incident happened at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where a delegation came, some saying to the Prophet, let's go quickly, quickly, quickly. And some, they came, they settled, they, they, they made the necessary arrangements wherever they needed to stay, etc. And then they went to the Prophet later on. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam preferred and he praised those who came, settled, minded peace, and later on. So there's no need to make haste. Just go when you settle, everything is arranged, and you, you, you've got nothing on your head. 
when you flee mentally, go to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and go and do your salat and salam. With regards to salat or salam, there will be a system in place. You normally enter from Babu Salam, and we will show you. And there's also the area of Riyadhul Jannah. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said, "Ma bayna kabari wa min bari rawda tu min Riyadhul Jannah." The, between my grave and my member, there, will be, there is a garden of paradise. So that is the area where dua is accepted. That is the area where the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has pr prayed. Sahabas have prayed, and it's a very virtuous area. You do want to go into that area, but now unfortunately they have the system in place. Uh, you've got to download the app, and maybe in Hajj as well, then you'll get a slot, and then you go accordingly. Hmm? Yeah. So now in Ramadan as well, there was a booking system. So you'll have to book and hopefully you'll get a slot. Make dua that you get a few slots, inshallah. Yeah. So this is the area. On the right hand side, you can see uh, the mihrab of the Prophet. On the right hand side of the mihrab, on the next slide. On the right hand side of the mihrab is the member of the Prophet. The member of the Prophet was quite plain and simple three steps you know nothing fancy obviously all this is ottoman development and contribution and normally when people ask me that hamari nahi masjid bani hai aur hame mabal ka ye member lana hai uh etc and some masjid they say we want to do like the arabs where the imam has an entrance from the back and a balcony and etc i just tell them though the sunnah is to have just three steps you know when the prophet once went one step and did dua i mean another one i mean another one i mean that hadith regarding ramadan and etc etc so from these details we learned it was just a very plain and simple no hand rest nothing and it was just three steps so the member is always a special place especially if you're an imam etc you know, and whenever you get onto the member, it's just a different feeling. Because the members are the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's member. Each and every masjid member is like the inheritance of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it is a very special place. And that's any member, every member. But there are certain members that are very, very special. And no doubt the member of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is one of these very special places. And when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made the mimbar, before that he was just resting uh, on a palm tree. And when he made the mimbar, the palm tree started to cry. The mimbar also replicates the throne of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and the authority. So mimbar is not just a normal place. And this is the member of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where the message was divine inspiration and wahi. So between the member and the mihrab, uh, uh, the, the member and the grave of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the white carpeted area and the pillars will also have a white marble, that's Riyazul Jannah. Now, you'll have to book a slot and then what happens is that you'll go, you'll go into one square area and you'll wait there. And then from there you go into another area and then you wait there. And maybe another third area before you get into Jan Riyazul Jannah. Yeah. So no matter how long it takes, just you're in Masjid another week. What, a, what other better place can you be in? Yeah. Sit, it might take you an hour to get there or more. Just sit, relax, read dua, durood, and one stage to another, you're coming closer to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When you enter into Riyadhul Jannah, pray in some of the locations that you will see. 
make the most of it and make dua. Yeah, things have changed. I can remember the last time when we went and we had 15 minutes in Riyadh of Jannah. I thought, oh, this is not enough. There was a time where we can sit as long as you want in Riyadh of Jannah. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Allah has blessed me and we've had amazing opportunities. I can remember once I went to do salam, salat upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and I was the only person doing salam. Meaning Allah, uh, you know, I was the only person in the world doing that ibadat at that time from that place. And things have changed now, you know. There's all, there's, I, I think now it's practically impossible when the masjid is open to the public that you can go for salam and you're the only person. We've actually done tawafs where, it's, you know, rather than doing istilam, we kiss the hajri aswad after every round. So we do a tawaf. We, we, we've done a tawafs where we've gone around and there's a queue of about 15, 20 people. So you just wait in the queue, no pushing, shoving. You kiss hajri aswad and you carry on every round yeah. and things have changed now yeah. that's why it's just going to get more busy and more expensive yeah. so and it's always better to do it when you're young as well because obviously young you fit you got energy you can you can do more yeah and may allah take us uh Inshallah, inshallah. And normally I say to, to, to this to the people who come to Masjid Al-Aqsa as well, that the moment Masjid Al-Aqsa is like Makkah Medina was, uh, you know, you know, when our elders went, our parents went to Hajj, it was totally different. Yeah? And they could do everything as well. And that's how Masjid Al-Aqsa is at the moment. So I encourage people, normally say, before inshallah, it will get busy and busier and like Makkah Medina. But before that happens, Let's get there. Yeah. I can remember, you know, in, the, in those days when we used to go to Makkah, Medina, and we used to stay in Natalia and all these third class places, you know. Yeah. And the South Africans, uh, they, they would be in the Kogir and all these good hotels. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. For us, Alhamdulillah, our situation has now changed. You know, we're in much better position, much better hotels, and we can afford it, etc., etc. You know, so Allah has blessed us. I know it's expensive. Ten thousand pounds is a lot of money, but for a moment in Arafah, you can't put a price to that. To be at the feet of the Prophet and directly pay your salam to him, and he responds. There's no price to that. So you will get these opportunities, inshallah, that will make you feel that, alhamdulillah, thumma, alhamdulillah, you're lucky no matter what anxiety, stress you have to go through and financial struggle, it's all worth it, inshallah, inshallah. Most importantly, make the most of it, inshallah. So, Moving forward, these are some of the other virtues of Ziyarat al Medina, which I will allow you to read. Yeah. If you want to increase the reward of your Hajj, you go to Medina, inshallah, inshallah. There are some, some people from this vicinity and locality who went to Medina, passed away from Medina. And Kafur Bai who lives close by, or who lived close by. Yeah, Allah Ta'ala hamabi, Makkah, Medina, or Aksaki, miti nasib farmai, inshallah, inshallah. On the way, keep on praying the Ruz Sharif. Yeah, when you reach Medina, you want to prepare yourself to go for Salat or Salam. So whenever you settled, etc., have ghusl, put on itar, and inshallah, inshallah, uh, go for your salatu salam upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
if you're in a, uh, with a, a few other people or a group and there is somebody who's been before, it is always advantageous and beneficial to go with somebody who has been before. Normally for Salatu Salam, it is Babu Salam. Babu Salam is the gate, the door that you enter from to give the Salam upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And there will be some slides, inshallah, that will explain this. So, if you look at the picture, uh, the printout over here, I don't think we have this in the sisters, do we? This one. There is one. So the sisters, you can also see a printout which has been uh, placed underneath the screen. When men go for Salat or Salam, men uh, will get to see uh, the, the gates of the grave of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is, this is the Rawdha, the front part of Rawdha, which the men have access to. This is the, on the screen, this is the front of the Rawdha. This is the front of the Rawdha. If you're standing there, facing the Rawdha, facing this way, if you're standing there, facing this way. So basically, if you're standing there, facing this way, then what's printed, the printed version at the bottom, is what you would see. Men, men would enter from Babu Salam. And they would come walking, 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 walking. All this is Riyazul Jannah. You would continue walking, walking, and then slow down with the, the public. And then here is the grave of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Hazrat Abu Bakr and Hazrat Umar. These three holes are these three holes here. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam behind this one, Hazrat Abu Bakr and Hazrat Umar. For the sisters, these are the three holes. This is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam behind this hole and this gate. And then Hazrat Abu Bakr is here, Hazrat Umar is here. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is here behind this hole. And then Hazrat Abu Bakr and Hazrat Umar. So when you stand in there, this is the face of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his, his feet are here. And the chest of Hazrat Abu Bakr is near the feet of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then behind Hazrat Abu Bakr is Hazrat Umar. And his chest is near the feet of Hazrat Umar, uh, Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So men folk, you would come walking. You would come walking from here, here, and then you would slow down with the public, and then you would first pray salam from here upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As-salatu wassalamu alayka ya Rasulullah. If they allow you to stay there, then you can stay there, or you can slow down. And normally, they, the, the, the police and the volunteers, etc., they ask you to continue moving forward. When you go to the Rawdha, like Imam Sab mentioned, do not raise your voice. Be totally respectful and totally free from any other thoughts and imaginations. And just think of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Do your salam. As-salatu wassalamu alayka ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you can even say as-salatu wassalamu alayka min walidayya min... min uh, أخي وأختي وبنتي وولدي و... in Arabic if you want to or you can say الصلاة والسلام عليك and in your own language uh, from my brother my sister my father my wife my uh, friend my uh, etc etc you can just imagine the salam from whoever you want to give salam on on their behalf and do please try to remember as all volunteers in your salam and give our salams as well. And the Anbiya alayhim salatu wasalam are alive in their graves and, um, and they respond to your salam. And that is a, gives you a special uh, connection and a special feeling. Yeah. Once you've done your salam, then you can go to anywhere in the masjid to sit, relax. And once you've made your first salam at the grave, after that, wherever you are, whenever you come into the masjid, from any location, you can do your salam as well. So when you just sat there, 
just think of the Prophet, his grave, face in that there. As-salatu was salamu alayka ya Rasulullah and read the Sharif. Do that for every salat when you come and when you leave. But that doesn't mean you should just suffice to that. No. Whenever you get the chance, at least once a day, twice a day, try to go to the, uh, the grave of the Prophet through Babu Salam and give your salams. The sisters, you will be coming, most probably they, ch they change time to time. Recently, I think they've started opening Babu Nisa, Babu Jibrail, etc. And you will be coming towards the rear part of the grave of the Prophet so the sisters will have access to all this area. The sisters will have access uh, on the screen, uh, all this area here. And you will enter from somewhere here. Currently, they allow sisters to come from here. And then you will have access to all this area here. Some part of the Azul Jannah. But, uh, and, and behind the grave of the Prophet ﷺ. Most probably you'll do your Salat Islam from this side. Yeah, on the screen there's a picture. So between the two pillars, these two pillars, and there's a few pillars there, and the, and the case in between all six pillars, so it's the middle two pillars between them yeah, is the graves of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Hazrat Abu Bakr and Hazrat Umar. Once you've done your salam upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then you move on and do your salam on Hazrat Abu Bakr, as-salat, as -salam. We don't do salat on, upon anybody except for the Prophet. As-salamu alayka, ya Abu Bakr, ya Sayyidina Abu Bakr, ya Khalifa Rasulillah. There's different things that you can say. As-salamu alayka, ya Sahiba Rasulillah. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And then to the grave of Hazrat Umar, As-salamu alayka ya Amir al-Mu'min, As-salamu alayka ya Khalifa al-Rasulillah, As-salamu alayka ya Umar ibn al-Khattab. Once you've done your salam upon all three great personalities, anywhere in the masjid, uh, you can go and do salam. You don't necessarily do dua. You don't necessarily have to stand there. Do not do dua facing the grave. Move away from the grave. And our dua should be to Allah and Allah alone. And it's better to, when you do your dua, you do not do it facing the grave, you do it facing the Qibla. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies, you'll just have to find out when is the time for the sisters to go for ziyarat. Hmm. Yeah. And the sisters, if you're on your periods, then obviously you cannot enter into the masjid, but you can go to the front end of the masjid near Jannatul Baqi, etc. And do your salam from where you can see the dome, the front end. And even at night times, etc. Just go with the family, sit in that area, yeah? And whatever walkers, digestives, leftover, just finish it off there. Yeah, your crisp and your junk. Yeah. So these are some of the pillars. And all the pillars have the significance, etc. Incidents that have taken place here. Uh, we only have about seven, eight minutes. So I'm going to let you read that in your own time. Hmm? And, and all the pillars will have like marks like this. Yes. And on some of the pillars, it says, Ustuwana, Hanana, Ustuwana, Aisha, Abu Lubaba, Sarir. And there's a lot of detail for all these pillars, incidents that took place, etc., etc. Normally, normally when you enter from here, this is Babi Jibreel, where Hazrat Jibreel used to come to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, sorry, somewhere here. When you enter from Babi Jibreel, it is the third pillar. From the Qibla side, it is the seventh pillar. And that is the pillar. Uh, which is not signposted, not many people know. That is the pillar when the Prophet ﷺ led the Salat when the initial stages in Medina, the Salat was towards Al Masjid Al Aqsa. So now at the front, everybody will be queuing up here where the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's Musalla is, his, uh, his, uh, his Musalla, where he led Salat from. But when you enter from Babi Jibra'il, third pillar. From the Qibla side, it is the seventh pillar. That is the pillar. It's not signposted. Not many people know. That is the pillar where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to lead Salah for many months towards Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. 
And when we were there, that, that's where we used to normally sit. And we, we could, in those days, we could sit anywhere for hours on the end. Yeah. So each and every pillar is explained. Please read it in, in your own time. There's a lot of detail. Uh, try to pray wherever you can and make du'as, inshallah. Yeah. And there's a raised platform where Ashab is so far. Uh, their names are written here. They have dedicated their lives to learn Islam and stay in the masjid. Yeah. They would go, it's a raised platform and you will see it there, inshallah. Jannatul Baqi, you will go to Jannatul Baqi, inshallah, and do your sal salam upon uh, the people of uh, the Sahabas, thousands of Sahabas who are buried there, Hazrat Uthman, Hazrat Aisha, uh, all the azwaj of, of uh, the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, and his daughters, uh, his son, etc., etc. So these great personalities are buried in Jannatul Baqi. You can go there after Fajr or after Asr. Yeah. And normally there are printouts that indicate whose grave is where. Yeah. And you can also take a photo shot of this from the presentation on the group and take it with you. Jabal al-Uhad, the Prophet ﷺ said, it's not far away. You can see Jabal al-Uhad from Masjid al-Nabawi. And that's where Jangi al-Uhad took place. When you go for Ziyarat, inshallah, you will go there. The Prophet ﷺ said that th this is a mountain that has love for us and we love it. Yeah. So, so if you go back, that's the area where the Prophet ﷺ took refuge. The cave inside the mountain uh, in Ghazwa al-Uhad. The martyrs of Uhud, their group, and one of the prominent martyrs of Uhud is Sayyidu Shuhada Hamza, Asadu Rasulillah. Yeah. He is uh, the leader of the martyrs, Sayyidu Shuhada. Wa Asadu Rasulillah, he is the line of Allah. The Prophet is an uncle. Masjid Quba, if you're there on a Saturday, inshallah, you can go after Fajr and pray two rakats there, inshallah. The Prophet used to go after Fajr Salat to Masjid Quba on a Saturday and he used to pray two rakats there. That's equivalent to an Umrah. Al Ijaba Masjid Al Ijaba, where the Prophet ﷺ made du'as and the du'as were accepted. Inshallah, when you go for ziyarat, uh, Masjid Al Qiblatain, etc., uh, etc. Et Just read all these details where the, the incident of Sahaba is turning in Masjid uh, towards from Masjid Al Aqsa towards Kaaba happened in Qiblatain, and it's near the university. It's approximately uh, three kilometers away from Masjid Al Nabawi. And it takes about two hours to walk there. We've done that walk. So these different different masjids in, in Masjid al-Nabawi, insha'Allah. Uh, and these are the locations, the dates, Khajur Market. Yeah, Amazon doesn't work in Medina. You've got to go to the market and buy it, yeah? And now this is a, 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 quite an old photo. Now it's a, they have a, a brand new masjid there. A, 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 and this is Masajid al Sabah. So Ghazwa uh, Ahza, where the coalition, all the enemies gathered against the people of Medina and the, and the, the Prophet and the Sahabas. They tried to attack them, uh, to totally annihilate them. Allah protected them. As the Salman Farsi said, let's dig a trench. And then they were doing jamaat in different locations. One jamaat here, and then another jamaat there. And then, so they can also watch out for the enemy. So in dif these different seven locations where they had different jamaats, there were small masjids. Now there's a, a, a quite a big masjid in that area. So you will go to Masajid al Sabah, inshallah. Yeah. And inshallah, lead, there's a lot of detail there. Masjid al-Bani Haram, and, uh, and this is, well, this is far away, but Badr. You may not be able, may not go to Badr, but now recently people have started going to Badr. jang -e badr is the well-known battle. Uh, MashaAllah, Muslims were very few in numbers, and they defeated over a thousand. Uh, Team Sotera, they defeated the Hazaro Kalashkar. You know, 
So these are different, different other masjids. Inshallah, in your own time, read these uh, uh, details. For those people who are going to perform, come to Makkah from Medina, putting on an ihram, this is the boundary of uh, uh, the Miqat, Masjid Zul Halifa. It's also called Masjid Shajara and Bir Ali. On the outskirts of Medina. Before you pass Zul Halifa, and that Masjid, before you go past, you have to be in Ihram and had recited the Bayt. If you forget, you've got to come back. Some of the wells, well-known wells, etc. Uh, and some other locations, uh, etc. This brings us to the end. Some advice at the end for you to read. You've heard quite a bit, inshallah. Time to do some reading. Yeah. However, we made this CD many, many years ago. Uh, Alhamdulillah. I, it needs to, uh, to be looked at. And that's done. <laughs> yeah. Whatever I've missed some. Huh. Yeah. The, the, I'm going to leave the last few minutes for you to ask questions. So, what was it I saying? The, the well of Azad Uthman, where the Thomas's ring fell uh, and Sakishiva, etc. It's all on the presentation. Please read it in your own time, inshallah. Was it I wants to say, then you are going to say. Is our Hajj Sati and Hajj program, sir? No, no, sir. Right. When you when you go in by Khazur, remember two, three things, please. Yeah, uh, make sure the skin is not flaking off. Okay, and you know the pip. If you buy in a full box, make sure there's only five, ten percent of the pip has come out. If it's more than that, then get buy another box where there's less pips has come out. Otherwise, you probably see kira inside. Yeah, and when you when you coming when you go into the airport from Medina back home or from Mecca back home. Please go there at least five hours before. Yes, because if you think, you know, because don't forget, there's about two, three million people trying to fly back. So what you do, the Zum Zum water you buy is in boxes nowadays. So you're going to put your, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, 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 when they give you the tak, uh, tak, uh, what do you call it? The tak number. Yeah. So you put it on your box, but make sure you take some cello tape from here, a marker pen and put your name on it. Because when you come here at the airport, people will not look at your tag number or your name on it. Right. And they'll just grab hold of, you know, your your actual water. If somebody else is busted or something's happened, but if he's got your name on, then they cannot take it. It's happened to a lot of houses before. So make sure you, you get a marker pen, put your name on it and things like that. The other thing is, when you're at the airport, make sure you got your haji mat with you because sometimes you might have to pay your salah there, the toilets might be busy, huzu khana might be busy. And then don't wait, just go straight to your checkout counter, even though if it's closed, get in the queue because there'll be other people as well. Yeah. The other thing is, if you want to bring in more zamzam, -zam, when I went uh, just before COVID, I asked the actual uh, guy who was doing my checking in, I said, look, I've got a lot of grandchildren. Can I take more zamzam? -zam? So he said, how many more do you want? I said, three more. He says, go and get it and put it in. So instead of bringing three, I brought six. Yeah. So if you request them, no, no. If you if you request them, they will probably let you bring it in. That's it. Make dua for all of us. Alhamdulillah, these young guys. Uh, brother Ayub, Molana, Brother Muhammad, they've made a lot of effort to do all these models, these slides and everything. You make dua for us and Molana, everybody, and for the whole Ummah as well, inshallah. And uh, make dua from now on that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all the Hazis, Haz and Umrah and the Ziyarat of Medina as well, inshallah. And one thing, when you go into Masjid al Nabi, don't forget to pray the Yatul Masjid. And the other thing is, one more, Molana, last year I forgot to tell you. One Ulmai Kiran was here. I don't know his name. I can't remember his name. But there's a hadith in there for Medina that wherever you are in Masjid al Nabi, you can do your salah to salam 70 times with khuzu, khuzu, with devotion and concentration. As salatu as salamu alayka ya Rasulullah. 70 times. As salatu as salamu alayka ya Rasulullah. So from Medina, he texts, uh, WhatsApps me and said, Fazal Bhai, where is this hadith? Can you show me? So I got it out of the kitab and sent him the full picture. So then he was satisfied. So please, you know, whatever we teach here, we don't teach it from our own uh, self. It's always out of the kitabs. 
But we advise everybody to take fazail e amal I mean, fazail e khaj with you. It's all, you can buy it in Urdu, in Gujarati, and you can also buy it in English as well. And take the how to perform khaj and umrah, take that kitab with you as well. So two kitab, fazail e khaj and how to perform khaj and umrah. Jazakallah khair. Salaam alaikum. For years, mashallah, Fazal Bayan has become our muallim. Jazakallah. He was just a few inches away from saying, you can buy this kajur from Cambrian. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sisters? No, no, for men only. Genital Baki will be for men only, but sisters can see it from outside. Any questions? Any questions? I think the azan is happening. Yeah, we still got a few minutes. Everybody got ahram? Sufyan, did you get your ahram? Go and meet Ayubai. Sufyan, did you get an ahram? Right. Who didn't, who didn't come last feed? Who's not got an ahram? Right, do a few obets. You've been not been coming, that means. Mm -hmm. Yeah. TK, inshallah. Uh, any, anything you need to ask personally, you can do so. Yes. Yeah. When you're doing, once you, when you start your tawaf, face and chest is towards Kaaba. And then face and chest in the direction that you, you walk in. And during Tawaf, you should not look at the Kaaba. During Tawaf, you should avoid looking at the Kaaba. Sometimes you get pushed and shoved and accidentally you see the Kaaba, that's fine. But be uh, aware of that and try avoid looking at the Kaaba because it's not the Kaaba that we worship. It's Allah that we worship. Yeah. Allah says we should worship the Rabb of this bait and this house uh, and we try to concentrate on his mercy and rahmah and to internalize it in, and accept it inshallah and allow it to penetrate through our uh, ourselves inshallah if some if somebody arrogantly yeah if somebody yeah if somebody arrogantly says no i am going to look at the kaaba and intentionally looks at the kaaba his tawaf goes no, nobody would do that, but just for your information. Teacher, Jazakumullah Khair for giving us the opportunity. Remember us in your du'as, inshallah, and make du'a that we can go as well, inshallah, inshallah. Kajur pani pike pite jao. Have some water. Take this little bonny bottle with you. Yes, yeah, yeah, but good. Jazakallah, all the volunteers and the masjid, uh, Ayuban, the committee, and everybody. Salma ben Jazakallah.